Hey guys, it's Isaac Frank. In this video, we'll be talking about abstracts and interfaces. Then we'll kind of compare these two to know which to use when um, programming. Let's just make this, um, let's use the previous version before the 0 0.6. Contracts are identified to be abstracts when at least one of the uh, functions is not implemented. So for instance, if we should create a contract here, for this abstract, and um, we'll create a function, let's see. Without implementing it, automatically, this um, contract becomes an abstract contract. Uh, abstract contracts are mostly base contracts. We can create another contract. Uh, let's call this derived. And this contract inherits this abstract contract. So this contract has to initialize the non-implemented function of the abstract contract. So we have to initialize results. So as you can see right here, we are initializing the abstract contracts function. So abstract contracts can also contain state variables just like a normal contract and also functions that are initialized too, which we can use in our derived contract. This was in 0.5.8 as you can see. So let's go over to 0.6. Let's see. From 0.6.0, so let's introduce three new keywords, the abstract keyword, um, the visual and the override keywords. So this was to explicitly declare um, what you want your contract to be so in here i'll just have to make this contract abstract so it won't do anything for you. you have to declare what this function should be and here since this contract is since this functions are this function is declared but without being initialized we know we have to initialize it in the derived contract we have to make this function a visual contract a visual function so we have to declare this to be visual Visual, not visual. And um, in this contract, after initializing, we have to override this contract. So we just have to add the override keyword. All right, keyword. So this is it. This is how we declare abstract contract in Solidity post 0.5.9. So if we have other functions, which we, if, let's say we initialize some functions here. Yeah. Okay, so we have a function which we initialize. In here, we can also call this function just like normal contract. But um, so far as this function has at least a single function that is not initialized, this contract needs to be an abstract contract. Let's just analyze this. So what happens if in the derived contract, we did not initialize these results? Let's see. If you look at the error, you see the, the derived contract should be marked as abstract because once a derived contract doesn't initialize the, I should just delete this. Once a derived contract doesn't initialize the uninitialized function of the abstract contract, the derived contract needs to also be an abstract construct because right now the, the derived contract is having values with one of its function not being initialized. You see, abstract. We're creating another abstract contract that has the same function uh, public and so so sure. All right, so right here we've created another contract and we try inheriting it. Um, second, as you can see, we have an error because we are overriding a result, but we there are two contracts, the two contracts we inherited. These two contracts have the same function. So we have to override these two functions. To do that, the override, you add parentheses to this override keyword. And in this parentheses, you list the contract which you're overriding. So we are overriding the abstract con uh, function. And we are also overriding the second abstract function. This is a way to override functions in Solidity. Just like a normal contract, abstract contracts can also have state variables and um, enorms, all those data types, abstract 
contract can also have functions. So functions without implementation have to be marked visual. Unlike interfaces where the functions are automatically visual. So this brings us to interfaces. Interfaces are similar to abstract contracts, but they just have few additional restrictions or limits. So first, interface cannot have any function with implementation. Unlike the contract, the abstract contract where we can declare functions with, um, we can define functions and implement these functions. In interfaces, a function cannot have any implementation. All the functions in an interface has to be um, just like this. It has to be declared without being initialized, but they don't have the key, the visual keyword. And all these functions need to be marked as external visibility. It needs to be marked as external visibility. Interfaces cannot have constructors because they are not contracts, so they can't have constructors. Interfaces can't also have state variables, but interfaces can have these enums or struct data type, which can be accessed using the dot notation. So to so see this in action, we'll declare we'll declare an interface. To declare an interface, you make use of the interface keyword, and you give your interface a name. Let's call this. Let's call this example. So in this, um, in your interface block, we can declare functions. And you can even add your returns statement and stuff, but the visibility type has to be external. And sorry, it cannot be defined. We can create enum data type. And we can call this, let's call this user. And we can give it values. Also, we can create structs. So we can create enums, struct, these two data type in an interface. So to access this enum, just like the contract, you, have, you can also inherit interfaces. So we just add this here. So we have to implement function. And I um, have to make this to so make this public. Also, we have to add the override keyword. But we don't have to add the visual down here. But we definitely have to add the override keyword to know we are overriding a function. So overriding this function and then in here we can um, do a tax. Maybe it should return. If you return this is 100 and let's see if we can add a return statement and yeah, so we just have to add a return statement as you can see we can't have different the header of the function has to be the same with the function you're trying to override so now we've overridden this function and we just tell it to return um, hundred whatever and also to assess these enums since we've um, inherited this contract automatically we have the enum we can create a function and um, this function should be a view and then should return it should return user Let's make this public. Okay, so you should return user in here. We should just return user dot a. So since we've inherited this contract, automatically this this enum is down with us. Let's see. We can deploy this contract now. And um, deploy. Right here, we have the different contracts. These are abstract contracts. We cannot deploy abstract contracts because they are abstract. You cannot deploy them. So we have to deploy this derived contract, which um, defined all these abstract contracts. So we deploy the derived contract. Okay, so as you can see, we are seeing all the functions which we declared in our abstract contract. If we use this print enum, it should return the interface user.a, which will give us the value of zero. So let's try it. We print it now. Yeah, as you can see, we get the value zero. So, what if you did not inherit this contract? How do you access these enums? The way to do that is, uh, let's say, for instance, we did not inherit this contract. 
should clean this to do that we have to um access the interface name which is example and then we have to use the dot notation and move to through to the um enum value which is um dot users um dot user which is this user and then we can get the specific value so here we cannot just return user we have to return example dot user so do it like this example dot user so as you can see if we should deploy this contract again we still get the same results our code didn't break so these are ways to assess interfaces value so you might be thinking why is there an interface and also an, an abstract contract when should we make use of each of these when are we when is the right time to make use of one over the other and uh, i don't know abstract contract are useful when you want to instill patterns into an application you're building um, they define the skeleton or the blueprint of your app so um the main difference between an abstract class and an interface is that an abstract class an abstract class can have shared state of functionalities so an abstract class can as a base contract all these contract i here can have this function and they just have to implement the results which can be different in different contracts a good abstract class will reduce the amount of code that has to be rewritten because um it can share its states while an interface has no information to share Abstract contracts are useful when having lifting is required. Why the interfaces are used strictly as representation. So we can just um, design the um, represent what our contract is all about. Like the ERC20 interface uh, where they listed the token, the total supply, the balance of and the transfer. These are a representation of what this contract does. Why abstract contracts are the blueprint which um, drive contracts should have. So the draft contract I heard this base contract and have this blueprint which are just contract shares between them. So that's all for this video on abstract contract and interfaces. Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll see you in another YouTube video. Thanks for watching.